I think it's safe to say that I speak for the entire PC and gaming media industry when I say that we are sick of hearing marketing people running around saying this product is like optimized for gaming. It's the best for gamers. I mean, you guys probably feel the same way. Hit that like button if you're tired of this crap. I mean, what does that even mean? For headphones and headsets, it's often the manufacturer's way of saying, hey, it's got rubbish sound, but you don't care or even notice anyway because you're gonna be too distracted by the vibrant colors and flashing lights. In the case of motherboards, it pretty much means, hey, this performs exactly the same in every possible way as a non-gaming model, but it's a different color. Enjoy. And traditionally for monitors, it's meant TN panels? They might have crummy color and viewing angles, but hey, the pixels switch a little faster and they're cheap, so uh, gaming. <laughs> but maybe this is different. Maybe the XR3501 is truly a gaming monitor, not only because it's just not good enough for anything else, but because even the compromises that have been made legitimately make it better for gamers. Could it be true? I guess we'll find out. The Master Case 5 by Cooler Master gives you the freedom to truly make your mid-tower PC case your own with a variety of modular parts and accessories. Click on the link in the video description to learn more. So I'm gonna split this video into two parts. Part one will be the speeds and feeds, the specifications, because for the most part, a monitor can be broken down into raw numbers with better numbers equaling a better monitor that's more worthy of your hard-earned money. So let's kick it off with the physical tour. If the industrial design trend towards slim panel assemblies and hyper-thin bezels reminiscent of a typical high-fashion runway model are your thing, then power to ya. But if you find more beauty in the Ronda Rouseys of the world, then the XR3501 might be your type. This baby is thick and imposing, but not exceedingly bulky, nor is it by any means unattractive. The stand is an elegant looking dark chrome finish affair with a red accent cable management hole through the back and not really much else to say about it. It does feature 20 degrees of tilt, but no swivel or height adjust. So you'll need a beefy vase amount and a transfer kit if you want more flexibility. In terms of IO, I give it a C plus. In spite of its size, BenQ couldn't put the power supply inside the XR3501, so they supply an external power brick. There is no built-in USB hub, and while having both DisplayPort and Mini DisplayPort is nice, there's no DVI or VGA if you're ever in a jam, and the dual HDMI ports are version 1.4 rather than 2.0, meaning that the maximum reported refresh rate of the panel when cooked up via HDMI is 60 hertz. Oh, and I guess there's also a headphone jack pass-through down there. Slightly to the right of the I.O., you will find the on-screen menu controls, which are not very well labeled and it's kind of hard to line up which button corresponds to which dot. I found it kind of frustrating to navigate, but all the usual options are in there. You can control pixel overdrive. You can set up BenQ's black equalizer feature if you want to see a little bit more detail in dark areas of the scene. So I guess that leads us pretty well around to the business end of any monitor. And let me tell you, there is some business going down there. This is a 21 by nine, my favorite for those who have been out of the loop for a while, aspect ratio monitor measuring 35 inches diagonally. So a touch larger, but pretty similar to models that I've used in the past from LG and Acer, featuring, get this, a 2560 by 1080 8-bit AMVA panel running at 144 hertz and boasting as good as four millisecond response times. Wow! And there's more to it too. Unlike those monitors I mentioned, BenQ has added FreeSync adaptive refresh rate support, a huge plus for the AMD gamers out there, and gone super aggro on the curvature of this display, with the XR3501 featuring an industry-leading 2000R curve. That would give a circle of these monitors just over half of the radius of a circle of 34UC97s. Holy crap! But is that even a good thing? I mean, obviously you could curve a display so much that you wouldn't even be able to use it anymore. So who has struck the right balance here? 
Well, I guess I'd say it depends on the use case. For productivity and office use, I like to feel like there's a world beyond whatever project I'm working on at the moment. A subtle curve is good in that case. For gaming, wrapping the display around me, letting it hold me tight, that is an experience worth having. And that's the XR3501 in a nutshell. Whether you're into shooters, racing games, flight sims, whatever, it is one hell of an experience. The pixel response times aren't anything to write home about if you're coming from a fast TN like the ASUS PG278Q, but the 144Hz refresh rate and outstanding contrast, coupled with practically non-existent backlight bleed and a lack of IPS glow thanks to the AMVA panel, more than make up for it in my mind. And on the subject of the AMVA panel, let's change gears and get empirical for a minute. This thing freaking rocks for color performance. Performance. These CalNAN 5 charts show just over sRGB gamut coverage and the best out-of-the-box accuracy that I've seen since I got my hands on my i1 Basic Pro 2 display calibrator. I mean, we're talking almost nothing with a Delta E of greater than 2. You could photo edit on this thing right out of the box. Awesome, right? Hold on. There is a big gotcha that I glossed over earlier and I have to come back to now. That resolution. I mean, I get it. This is a gaming monitor. And in that context, this trade-off actually makes a lot of sense. Because at 3440 by 1440, there isn't a display interface today that can handle 144 hertz. Not to mention that hardly a graphics card in existence would be able to drive that resolution at 144 frames per second. But that many pixels at this kind of size is not a retina display. And in fact, as I mentioned in my video on the LG 34UM67, it's quite unpleasant for me to use outside of games because on-screen elements look unnaturally large, like someone turned the scaling up too high, and some graphics even seem to lose fidelity when viewed like this, with black lines ending up with weird colored glows around them. But with all of that said, this is truly a gaming monitor. It is intended to be purchased and used by people who will game on it primarily with creating spreadsheets in Excel as a distant afterthought. And as such, I consider it a smashing success. If you're more productivity focused, I still love my high resolution LGs. If you're somewhere in the middle, Acer's 75 Hertz XR 341CK is a great middle ground. But if you're a gamer to the core, I agree with BenQ's product design team's choice to go all in with this lower resolution and super tight curve 144 hertz panel and the XR3501 is my new top dog gaming monitor, especially if you're running an AMD graphics card and you can take advantage of FreeSync adaptive refresh rates. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know where that button is, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon, instructions up there, buying a cool t-shirt like this one, or with a direct monthly contribution through our community forum, which you should also join. There's lots of cool people over there. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So click that little button in the top right corner to check out Terran's robot Vex IQ video where he gets into like robotics. It's actually pretty cool. See you guys next time.